Praise the Lord. Good evening. God is worthy to be praised at all times. I'm going to, uh, before I do that, I want to always ask, uh, give room for any questions anyone may have had. Try to address that right quick if anyone had any. Yes, sir. I got a couple. Okay. One of them is famous. I keep asking and you keep answering. And just every time I hear it, Every time I hear it, it just sounds weird to me about buying it and losing it. <laughs> I can't get past it. Like, when you say it, it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. But when, when these other people say it, it sounds strange to me. Mm -hmm. And I bind every devil. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, that, but, um, time is our time. Mm -hmm. I never, uh, that's my time. It's like time's our time. Mm -hmm. It's like to equate it, two point four, you know, two hours and forty minutes. Oh, you know, giving God a tenth of our day. A tenth of our day. That's a, that's that's. And that just that just got me like, wow. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? I can't get you know say so. Mm -hmm. And then to to go further with that time at the time. Say. Does. Watching like the sermons and stuff like that ultimately includes time, or is that just something we're doing? Let me start with the bind and loosen, uh, which is you can find that in Matthew. Let's go there real quick. Matthew chapter sixteen. Okay. Matthew chapter sixteen. Here in your life. Here in your love, set up. We was actually just talking about this, touching on this, um, me and my wife just yesterday. Um, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Okay, it says, I will give, Matthew 16 verse 19 says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Before we do that I want to say I've been sending y'all this thing I was talking about that Sunday about the snake the pastor who held that snake. Y'all did you did anyone know about that story? Okay I, I need to send y'all that link because I found it and it was a pastor it, it was four generations of pastors in a Pentecostal church. And four of them had passed, three of them had passed away. The son took over after his daddy passed away. He did it, and, and the snake bit him. You see the video. It's a video on YouTube. You go on YouTube and look up the video. And he's preaching and held this snake. And then you see when that snake go in and bite his ear, he keep preaching. And all this blood starts firing out. He wanted them to take him to the mountain to determine if God would say he was worthy or not. But they took him to the hospital. What mountain? I, that's, it's somewhere in the, uh, what was it, in the Dakotas or something this church is in somewhere. And none of that, none of that, the mountain and all that, it's something, but anyhow, playing with fire, they got burned. That's the thing, we, what we were talking about, we, uh, the scripture in Mark chapter 16, you, uh, if no deadly serpent shall cause harm, you can drink deadly poison, and it won't cause harm. But as I was explaining, that's for a purpose. That's for a purpose, not just to be testing God. And sure enough, his father died within minutes of uh, being bit, and then he died in the hospital, uh, maybe like hours after the snake bite, but it's nothing to play with. But anyhow, uh, Matthew 16, 19, binding and loosing. It says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Uh, then he strictly charged disciples to tell no one that he was Christ. He was the Messiah. Um, whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you loose shall be loosed. And as we talked uh, about this before, that sometimes, I mean, um, 
it's, it's some people kind of get it. Well, I, I guess I should ask the question this way, because some people, and it's how we've been taught. Actually, tonight I want to talk about something we've been taught to uh, after this. It's something that what I learned a lot of years ago is I said to myself, I'm going to stop saying these popular sayings in the church that people have just been saying for a lot of years. I need to find out that there's biblical that there's biblical proof to it, or that there's any validity to it, or is it just a, a saying that men made up? So it's just tradition. And there's a lot of things, and that we say, um, and we have it. We have said it just because we heard it being said without revelation from the Lord or without any studying from the Lord or without any studying on our own. So, bind and loosen. First of all, you, I guess you have to know the, the definition of binding. And we uh, understood that as something that's... Can you lift it up right quick? Let me see that. This is a binder for everybody that don't know. And I know everybody here do know. We've got some little kids. So. These, are, these are binder rings. They hold these pages together. So, if you had, if you had uh, some kind of doctor's report, or let's just say headache, let's say a, a bad headache, do you want to bind that headache to you, or have it loosed from you? Loosed. Want it loosed. Now, if Satan was in your home, do you want to bind Satan in your home or tell him to be loosed from your home? Most people would say loose, right? But we, but over the years, we've heard people say bind. I bind this headache. Now, why would you want to bind that headache? So you keeping it in, you keeping it in place. You keeping it together. <laughs> you want it to be loosed from you. It says whatever whatever you bind shall be bound. Bound. If you if someone if 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 I was someone to come bound me now, what does that mean? I can't move. I'm bound. I'm stuck in place. You don't want something that's not good for you to be stuck in place in your in your situation or in your atmosphere. You want it to be loose from you. Now I used to hear prayer. People used to say, "Loose them, loose them, and let them go." People, anybody heard that? People pray like that. They'll say, loose them and let them go. But here's the other thing. Now, I, this, this came years ago. Pat, uh, Apostle Sean was teaching this. When he first taught this, I said, this don't make no sense. Now, why didn't it make any sense? It's because all my life, that's how, how had I been heard and had I talked. Right. But then he says, you can't, when he made this statement, I was really taken aback. He said, you can't find Satan. He said, the church, we can't bind Satan. People were, and I was sitting there like, what? What is he talking about? We can bind Satan? He said, if you could bind Satan, Satan would have been bound years ago. You cannot bind him. He has a date when God is going to deal with him. He said, we don't bind, you can't bind Satan. And if that was, if that was, if you, if this was true, if this was a true statement, you could bind Satan. And how come off your first bound, binding, he wasn't bound in your life? Why does he, how does he keep coming back? Amen, yeah. You come against the works of Satan. That's what you do. Like a, 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 a two rams, right? When they fight, what they do? Here's an opposing force, an opposing force, and they do this. Now, what happens is, one of them, they, they, they do that. Until one of them is retreats or they push them back or however that works. But that's how you do. Now you can definitely come against the works of Satan. We was, now what we was talking about was the term cancel. I cancel the assignment. What y'all think? Can you cancel the assignment of Satan? Can you cancel the assignment? Can you cancel? By cancel. Can I cancel the assignment? Because we hear, anybody ever heard that term? I cancel the assignment over your life right now. Do you have that? Do we have that power to cancel the assignment over someone's life? 
What about canceling the attack? Cancel, canceling the attack. Do we have, can we cancel an attack? Can we put, can we put in an order to cancel an attack? And, and I'm just, y'all know how we like to do. We just talk, yes sir. Yeah, you can. Okay. Because it's a, the thing about it is that, you know, we're, we're speaking against that thing. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not saying that the enemy won't still try to attack, but we're speaking, we're, we're speaking against the actions. Okay. You, you know what I'm saying? So we can we can we can speak that, you know, I, I cancel, you know, what I'm saying I cancel, you know, the enemy over your life right now in the name of Jesus. You know, we, we speaking against that thing. We're speaking and that's what we're called to do. We speak. We're called to speak life into the situation mm -hmm. and speak those things as so. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying that's what we're, we're called to do. <laughs> we we are, we are speaking. But does that mean that the enemy is not going to fight or try to attack somebody or try to come against somebody? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't mean that. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? So, okay. So. Anyone else want to uh, give input on that? Can we cancel the assignment of Satan? Yes. I don't know if it's cancel the assignment of Satan, but I'm thinking on the terms of... Uh, uh, when you said loose and bind, mm -hmm. loose the devil, the devil get under my feet, or Satan get on my left, uh, uh, Satan, uh, devil no longer in uh, my child, the devil no longer in my household, loose my child, devil. Is that, uh, I mean, that seems like uh, when you said loose and bound, you loose, you saying it, but it's not automatic. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm with. Um, Minister Damien, when he said you say it, but it may come back, you're not gonna get. I ain't say the results, but like if you're trying to get um, a child, or a teenager, or somebody to straighten up or something, you can say the devil let go of my child, devil uh -huh. get under my feet, devil you're not gonna take my baby. Uh -huh. You feel relieved. I do. I know I've said it before. I feel relieved, uh -huh. and once the relief is given me. The satisfaction why I can sleep. My baby is back in this house, it's gonna curfew time before curfew, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. It gives me that relief, I say, for if I don't continue and continue and continue doing it, that I'm doing it every night because I know how to uh, pray the devil away, but do she know how to pray the devil away? Mm -hmm. So it might be a hard, not me. Okay. But it's me that's fighting for her. All right, amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone else want to say anything on that? Um, let me see, 12 and 18, each one, okay, uh, let me just read the uh, definition to cancel. It says to decide or announce that an event or something will not take place. So it's to decide or to announce that something will not take place. Now, if you want to look from the announcement side, when a minister Dan was talking about speaking to something, that we are announcing that it will not take place. But the decision part is up to God. Now, I want to go back to what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago about blessing, blessing people who curse God. Uh, and then uh, what I've learned to do is I learned to, okay, let me, let me say it this way. What I've learned to do when you see cancel the assignment of Satan, you don't see that anywhere in the scriptures. However, you do see Jesus rebuked Satan. Rebuked Satan. Uh, and now what does, what does rebuke mean? Anybody got that definition real quick? It means to strongly correct. Uh, let me just uh, read a couple more. Okay, it means, here we go, express sharp disapproval or criticism because of someone's actions or their behavior. Now, Satan, Jesus rebuked Satan. And we have uh, that power. I get 
our intentions to say, I canceled the assignment. I canceled the assignment. I get it. Uh, even if we say we come against. Come against, cancel. You know, we are trying to speak life to that situation. Trying to uh, come and have, do, uh, perform or express spiritual or uh, execute spiritual warfare. That's what we're trying to do. So we are trying to come back what is taking place in the spiritual realm. Um, however, do we know, I think that we always got to be led of the Spirit, and we also always have to pray God's will be done. Because we don't know what His will is in that situation. Go back to someone who cursed God. And now that's their punishment. You know, they got something that looks irreversible. A bad doctor's report, and it's their punishment for all the years that they cursed God. And that's God's will. That's his plan for that situation. That's their punishment. That's his judgment. So for, for, for when we come and say, I cancel that assignment, is that even going to be effective? I'm telling you this. I'm saying like a family member that say, they come and they say, please pray for my family member. They got this. Thing that's irreversible, it's not looking good, and we pray and say, I cancel that assignment now in Jesus' name. I come against it, I bind it in Jesus' name. And God is saying, My plan is in motion, my judgment is upon them. See, that's why we should pray God's will be done. I want to, I want to, I want to remember uh, the scripture with Simon Peter. Jesus says, the devil desires to sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. Now, he did not say, but I cancel that assignment, I come against that assignment, or I bind that assignment. He says, we're not going to do anything. We're going to allow him to sift you as, to try to sift you as wheat. That's what he said. We're gonna, we could, we, I could, I could, but we're going to allow you to go through that. Because it's for your making. And after you are made, strengthen your brothers. You see what I'm saying? So in this case, would it have been feasible to say, you? basically what he was saying was, Peter, you're going to go through a whole lot of trials. And a whole lot of situations. And a whole lot of things is getting ready to come your way that's going to turn your life what it feels like upside down. But he didn't say, but I cancel, I bind, or I come against that assignment. That assignment was necessary for Peter's making. See what I'm saying? So sometimes, I mean, we, in every situation, we got to know God's will. What is God's will? So we should we, we could pray, Lord, let your will be done. But I do get it because I've prayed in that very same way. But I always add, Lord, if it be your will now. That's how I pray now. Lord, if it be, let your will be done. Lord, if it be your will. Well, we come against this now in the name of Jesus. And I've prayed like that for my life, and I've saw results. Come against this now, Jesus. I come again. Now, the other, I guess the other question is, is it an assignment or is it an attack? Is it an assignment or is it an attack? Was not Job's situation an assignment? His, his situation was an assignment. But you could then say it all, he may have felt like he was being attacked. You know? So it's many layers to this. Many layers to this. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, so, so yeah, what, what you just said, that that uh, marks it in both ways. Say what you just said again. Job you said about the Job thing. Job's situation was an assignment. Mm -hmm. But from Job's standpoint, he felt like he was being attacked. However, I mean, I could say I, don't, I wasn't there. Peter's situation was an assignment. Peter's situation was just like Job. Have you considered my servant Peter? And, and he says, I, I, I bet I can sift him like wheat. I can guarantee you I can sift him like wheat. Jesus knew these plans. He said, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. You know, he knew that. And so for someone to come, one of the disciples come, when Peter started going through, I come against this now. In Jesus' name, I, I, I bind this. I bind this attack. Cancel this assignment. It was necessary. It had to go. And I think that's what 
was your point when you were saying, will he stop? Will he come back around? And I think that's what happens when we cancel or bind or come against, and he's still coming. It's showing that this is necessary. The Lord appreciates our prayers, but he's saying, y'all got to step aside. I'm, I'm doing this right now. This is, we, we're doing something for they make it. It's either for they make it or it's judgment. It's either that way. You, you know, the thing about it is that, yeah, you, you won't be able to stop the, you know, not saying able to shut down demonic activity, right. you know, upon the earth forever. Right. But you can. You know, you, you can charge if the Holy Spirit tells you mm -hmm. to say something. You can enter, a, a person can be healed from something and it'll never happen to them again. Mm -hmm. You know, because in, in Mark, when he was dealing with the, and, and this is why I like the different uh, Bible books, mm -hmm. because Mark says a little bit something that Matthew doesn't say as far as the details. Okay. When it was talking about the foul spirit. And um, this is this is Mark, and I'm gonna start at 25 and read just down to 26. It says, "When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him." Mm -hmm. This is the final statement that he's telling. He's giving this particular, uh, you know, demonic presence. Right. He said. Don't go into them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and for so for this situation, on this one, I would say that in in certain cases, if the spirit um give you utterance to say it, mm -hmm. it will be a final statement that that thing won't even be able to allow to even attack somebody anymore. Mm -hmm. Um but there are certain situations where a person might be delivered from something. And if they choose to go back to it, right. that's on them. Right. Just like they, they got those 12 step or those seven step club things. Right, right. And they have the people going there. And then a lot of people end up going right back. Yeah. And part of it is because of they, when the people are sitting down talking to each other, they having them confess that they, they alcoholics. Right. Okay. So right. how a person going to stay free right. if when they sit there and they're in the meetings right. and they ain't had a drink in years and they still calling themselves an alcoholic? Right. You, you binding that to you? Yeah. Binding see, that to you. see, so the situations is, is certain situations different, but like you just right. said, the binding the thing, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to, if, if this person is free from this thing, right? Right, right, right. Why would this person uh, go to a, a, a club that he's been healed from and right. said, Man, I'm, 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 um, I got a foul spirit in me. I'm deaf and dumb. Yeah, I'm, I got a deaf and dumb spirit in me. Why? Right. You know, some right. people speak them things upon themselves, and that you, the enemy, like you got the door open. Okay, I'm coming back in. Right. Right. That's why we always tell people that there's reports, but that's not what you are. The doctor could say, uh, you know, well, you're, we found cancer. And we have to, people have to be careful to not say, well, I have cancer. Right. You know, mm -hmm. there's a report that says there's cancer. Mm -hmm. But I don't have it. I'm not going to claim it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to claim it. You get what I'm saying? Now, here's the other thing. Um, those classes, they, they do, they make, there was someone I knew that uh, he was facing trouble going back to jail because he wouldn't want to say it. He didn't want to keep coming in there and saying that's what he was because he was he, he had been redeemed and he didn't want to say that anymore of going back and keep saying that. But the court was ordering him to say that and he found a way by the spirit to answer, to comply without having to say that. And that was the Holy Spirit that gave because that's what they do. That's, that's why I tell people they don't go to some kind of counseling. Don't go to go to one that's Christian based. But anyhow, because they make you want to stick to keep these labels on you. But most people, here's this situation in Mark chapter 16, right there. Here's that situation. No, Mark 9. Mark 9. Here's that situation where um, he says not to return, but you see uh, in a lot of some of the cases he says go and sin no more lest something worse come upon you. 
You know, don't don't allow that to come back to you. So um, there was a situation. I think in this case, when you look at a person who's who, who is mute, once God opened their mouth and their ears, that's fine. You know, God healed them. That was a miracle, and from our stand. But people who be healed from something that had them bound, some kind of uh, struggle or something like that, they go and open that door and come back on them and be even stronger. But if the Lord heals someone who was blind, and, and, and it's final, you know, so there's a lot of different cases there. But yeah, I would say in these cases, because uh, we, you know, if you get too, if you're not careful, we get too technical. But I think in these cases, you have to just be led by the Spirit. And that's the final, that's, I, I would say that's the best answer for that. Because and always pray, Lord, if it be your will, if it be your will, Lord, let your will be done in this situation. Because in the end, we only know, Bob says we prophesy, we know in part, we prophesy in part. We only know a part of the situation in the Spirit. We don't, the Lord knows the whole thing. And so we should say, Lord, if it be your will, you know, or, or, you know, Lord, let your will be done in their life. Lord, I cancel, I come against this assignment now. And, and now, uh, think about this thing in, in Iran, right? Was it Iran? They hit this man's plane. Then they attacked back. And then they countered the, the uh, they blew, then the, then the Iranians blew up something or hit an army base. And then the army attacked back. You see the different shots. You know, that just keeps coming, and that's how in the spiritual realm it, it goes, where Satan attacks, we attack back. Satan attacks, we attack back. The thing is, is in the end, if you don't keep countering, then he'll win. He'll gain ground, just like any army, any war. If you don't keep countering the attacks, he, the enemy will win and gain ground. So you have to counter the attacks. Um, otherwise, the enemy gains all the ground they win. But in the end, we know that we win. The Bible says that we win. So you can, it is wise to lift up or pose a counterattack when you see demonic forces somewhere. You just don't want Satan to move into your house and then bring a whole party of demons with them. You got to counter that by, by scripture, by words, by speaking, by rebuking. And so I would say that anyone that says cancel, I like to be accurate. You know, you want to be effective. The Bible says the effective, the effective fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. So when we pray, we should be effective in our prayers. We don't want to say anything that's not effective. That you were talking about that earlier, that it becomes a missed prayer because of the way of our knowledge in praying, right? So we want to be effective how we pray. I, I, I cancel, I come against, but when it comes to binding or loosing, you don't want to bind I, I, to something to you. You want it to be loosed from you. You know, and 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 and, and um if it, if now people say, now what, what do you want to be buying to you? I buy good health. I buy blessings. You know, uh, and so I think it's, it's I think it's the way that how you gotta be led and how you do it. Yes, ma'am. I was gonna say um, the scripture in Isaiah. That, um, correct me if I'm wrong. That this is kind of equivalent to the canceling thing. That no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. Because, you know, a weapon is to bring harm, to bring damage, to bring right. something to you. Right. So that's an, I believe that's an effective scripture to use as far as, um, like, as far as to saying, to yeah. cancel something. Right. No weapon form so shall prosper. That's, a, that's equivalent with canceling. No weapon form will prosper. The weapon, it says that the weapon will be formed. Did not say the weapon that was formed. You see, weapon was formed against Job. The weapon was formed against Peter, but it did not prosper. Amen. The weapon are formed in our life all the time. Weapons are doctors' reports. They are uh, financial situations. They are situations that come up in the family. Those are weapons that are trying to be formed. But you got to speak life to that situation, like Mr. Damon said, and 
decree, if you decree a thing, it shall not be established. I mean, it will be established. So, um, so if I decree good health, I decree that no weapon formed against me will prosper. You get what I'm saying? You got to speak like that. Um, as I was saying about these things that we hear from tradition, and my wife had been talking about sayings that's not in the Bible that we hear. I want to bring this one up, touch on it, and then we're going to get out of here. This one that was in my spirit, I'm just going to, uh, I was going to say this still, but I'm going to adopt her theme tonight. <laughs> you know, I was debunking the internet, but she got me stirred up here. So this one I came up with, I mean, that the Lord gave me here. Hallelujah is the highest praise. We heard that. Everybody heard it. We all have said it. Anybody who have not heard that, that hallelujah is the highest praise. Never heard that? Okay. She's still new reading in the Bible and new into the things of God. But we've all heard that hallelujah is the highest praise, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Question will be tonight is why, who said it, and where is it at in the Bible? Why is hallelujah the highest praise? Who said it, and where is that biblical? Yes. Oh, wait. I said question. Uh -huh. What does um, hallelujah mean? What does hallelujah mean? That's a good question. Now, if you know, in the Hebrew, it is, has the H. But in Latin, it's A. That's why you see sometimes it says hallelujah. Songs, even that songs that people say, some people sing that song, hallelujah, hallelujah. And some people sing it, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The first time I heard that song was on Shrek. Well, that was that was on Shrek. Yeah. You, you remember? Uh, you remember uh, Shrek? Well, yeah, it was on it was on Shrek. That's part one. I think so. Oh, okay. It, it was it was it was in there. That's the first time I had really really heard that song. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a cartoon. That's a that's a traditional hymn, and people with different renditions. It has some anointed versions of it. So, where, <laughs> why, and who? Where, why, and who? I asked y'all a question. Uh, I answered part of that question uh, since for, for time purposes and because that's what we're talking about. You can save your time looking. It's not in the scriptures. The hallelujah is the highest praise. The closest... Uh, you get to that is in Psalms one forty eight, and then let me see here. Hallelujah. We are Psalms one forty eight and one. Now, depending on what translation you read, it says, "Praise the Lord." Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Uh, Psalms 141. Psalms, I, I think I say 141, but it's 148 and 1. I'm sorry. One Psalm 148 and 1. Another translation says, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the height from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. And another translation says, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highest places. Praise him in the highest places. Um, and then you have um, I'll just read that one. You can write down Psalm 150 uh, and 6 as well. But there is no scripture that says hallelujah is the highest praise. Where that started from, I'm not sure. And now people say, well, it is though. Now let me explain to you and answer her question as to what it even means. And then you will get an understanding to say, yeah. Hallelujah is a compound word. And the hale or ale part means praise. 
As you know, the N part is ya. Ya. Or ja. Or ja. Ya. Ja. What is ya? God is God. If that term simply means praise God. That's what that means. So when people say hallelujah, you know, they preach and they say hallelujah. What they're telling everyone is praise God. Praise God. That's what they that's why when you look at one, if you if you look at Psalms 140, what did I get? 148 and 1. 148 and 1, some translations just say Praise God. They repeat it twice. Praise God. Praise God. Praise Him in the highest. That's what it's saying. Praise Him in the, the highest places. And maybe that's where they got that from. But another translation would say, Hallelujah, which means praise God in Hebrew. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. That's right. It was written in Hebrew. So, this is things I just caught myself. I'm trying to, everything that I've been, that's just been grafted in us just from the years of being in church and sayings, I've been trying to catch myself on it. Uh, and um, so sometimes we say, Hallelujah, God. Basically, we're saying, Praise God, God. Yeah, praise God, God. Um, and so I've been trying to say, I, I call myself saying tonight, I just said tonight, pray, hallelujah God, praise God God. And so most people, when they say it in the church, hallelujah, and people repeat it back, you say, what you say, you tell them the audience to hallelujah, praise God. If they say it back, they say it, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God, praise God. That's what, so, but they really, it was really a command. And when I said hallelujah to the crowd, the crowd would praise God. You know, so when I would say hallelujah, and everybody would, glory, glory, glory to his name, how praise him, but however, whatever, they'll clap, whatever. So that's what they would say, because that's what you say. Like when we say, so sometimes I say, I say it after the praise and worship, or after the service, or after the word, I'll say, come on, just give God praise for the word or whatever. In Hebrew, they would say hallelujah, or hallelujah. And then the, the crowd will praise God. That's how that was. But there's no scripture that says it's the highest praise. And there are songs out there. There's a lot of songs. Hallelujah, it's the highest praise. Hallelujah, it's the highest praise. And so I'm like, it's got to be some. Where did this start? It's got to be somewhere. Somebody is, you know, where is that at? And I looked a lot of places. Uh, Hosanna. You guys remember Hosanna? Most people... Remember they were saying Hosanna when Jesus came in? <laughs> Hosanna. Hosanna means save us. That's what it means. So when people say Hosanna in the highest, she okay though. She okay. Uh, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. It means when he was coming in, which that's what was so shocking when she when he was when he came in riding on the donkey they were saying hosanna they were saying save us that that mean they were acknowledging that Jesus was the savior and then what a couple of days later they were saying crucify him the same crowd that was yeah. that was yelling out hosanna was started saying crucify him which points though to Mass, uh, what is that? Mass conformity. That's what's going on now. Social conformity and mass conformity is what is what was is a byproduct of the spirit of the world. When you, when you look at this, one of the things that come with the spirit of the world is social conformity and mass conformity. What does that mean? That means that there's a lot of people that follow the leader. They just do something just because everyone else is doing. It. And look at this, uh, this, this, this virus. Is it, is it, is it a, <clears throat> some people will just be fearful because other people are. That's called social conformity. I'm going to do what I see, the, what's, what it looks like the door is doing. If, if not, if everybody go and buy a hand sanitizer, I'm going to conform and I'm going to go buy it. <laughs> I don't even know why. I already, I already got five bottles. I just, everybody buying it. 
the chicken sandwich. Everybody buying the chicken sandwich? I'm going to go buy the chicken sandwich. That's called mass conformity or social conformity. And that's what was happening there. Everybody shouting, Hosanna, save us. A couple of days later, crucify them. Because they were doing it just because other one, everybody else was doing it. Um, so anyone want to say anything? Got any questions? So that's what that answer your question. It means to praise God. And that's what Hallelujah means. Yes, sir. You know, it's interesting when you brought up, did you say the crowd was, what did you say about the crowd? They were days before cheering Hosanna, which means save us. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, some some people, I was reading in the scripture, and it was talking about how the leaders was trying to, they was swaying the crowd too. Mm -hmm. So, if you're not careful, if you right. don't have a mind of your own, right. you would be easily uh, tempted and swayed into certain situations just because of how somebody else feels about the situation. Right. Because they actually was pumping and priming the crowd yeah. to think like them. Right. Because the crowd already thought a certain way like Jesus. Right. You, you know, they, they, they saw what Jesus was doing. Mm -hmm. But then it came around these leaders mm -hmm. that wasn't doing really what they were supposed to do and they was really against the word of God yeah. and didn't even know it yeah. and they were swaying the crowd. It said that in the scripture. Yeah. So these the leaders back in the day, it was some toxic toxic leaders. Yeah. And that's why Jesus was that's why Jesus, if you saw, he didn't take it lightly mm -hmm. on leaders in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's why when he came up in that house in the temple, he turned over the tables. Right. Because it wasn't just baby Christians in there. Right. It was leaders in charge of that that was allowing that to go on. Right. Right. Um, it, uh, it, but that, what he said is so true. And that's what goes on today. You can give a popular, uh, now today it's more celebrities. You can give somebody that's popular that'll sway a whole massive crowd to do something or dislike someone. You see that? They, they, they take on this mob mentality and they begin to dislike someone just be, I don't even know, they don't even know you. Yeah. And they'll dislike you just because everyone else disliked you. After they one time, they used to like you. Yeah. Now because everyone is disliked, and guess what? Guess what's so crazy and unique about that situation? If someone would then turn around and say, you know what y'all? We like him again. Or we like her again. Guess what? Everybody start. Y'all, y'all need to forgive. Y'all need to. Y'all need to. You know, y'all, y'all too harsh. And everybody will start liking the person again. And here you have. Uh, I'm glad you brought that point out. They were influenced, and that's what we talk about: social or mass conformity. Here you have Hosanna, which means save us, rescue us, savior. They were crying out to him, rescue us, save us. When he came into the town, that's what they were crying out. And then the crowd, the leaders, the, the, the influencers began to come out and say, tell, tell them to cru crucify him. Say it loud so they can hear you. Crucify him. And then one person, crucify him. Crucify him. And everybody else that don't have no, uh, that, that they have a problem with their identity or just want to be accepted and popular or whatever, uh, you know, they start saying, crucify him. Cru and everybody, everyone else, start crucifying. There's this uh, thing on TV that my son and my daughter watch, and it's called Brain Games, and they showed an experiment of social conformity where this, these people came to a doctor's office, and you came, and I come in, and about every three seconds or something, you stand up. <laughs> so, I'm looking at you. No, it was like a bell went off or something, and every time this bell went off, you stood up. So I'm reading the magazine, all of a sudden I'm watching you, and I notice every time that bell rings, he stands up. So what happens is, I begin to stand up. Every time the bell rang. They did that like five times. And, and everybody began to stand up. Then what began to happen was, only like one person was like, I don't know what they're doing, I'm not standing up. And I was telling myself, that would be me. I'm not just going to, if people people not careful, that's how people will receive the mark of the beast. If the mark of the beast was in hand sanitizer, people would be receiving it right now. You know what I'm saying? Because of what everyone is doing. If just because everyone do something. Uh, there, there was people that got mad at me, and I'm not, I don't, I don't endorse any candidate. But there was people that got mad at me that I said, why are people so mad at this certain individual? 
did they do something personally to you? You know? Or are you just upset because everyone else is? If there's a, if there's a, if you have a valid reason as to why, then I understand that. But if they didn't do anything to you, why do you have so much uh, uh, vile in your heart towards them? You know? Um, and our pastors told us years ago that no one should, when it comes down to um, political parties, we need to vote kingdom. Now, I got a different, I, I agree with that statement, but I'm not one who uh, gets involved in political parties, let me just say it like that. However, so basically what they were saying is you want to go to the one who is standing up for Christian rights. Who stands up for the Christians. Not one who, not ones who tear down the altars of God. Who are for uh, uh, all kinds of things that's contrary to the word of God. Let me just put it like that. So we don't need to look at any policies. We need to look at where state policies on the word of God. What they said against uh, uh, murder of defenseless humans that's in someone's stomach. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. What do they say about all this kind of stuff? And that's how people should pray and make their decisions if, if, if that's you and you choose to even go that route. Because there's a lot of people that don't. Uh, and I don't have anything bad to say about that. Um, but I said that to say some people will be just mad at people online. You'll see that just because everybody else is. And, and, and you, for me, I've always been one who, one, if someone say, I don't, I don't, I don't like that person. Because they did this and that. I always got to find out for myself. Right. You know, it's people that do that. Just, they'll yeah. stop liking you just because someone else don't like you. And I've always had to be one to find out for myself. I remember years ago, I remember a lot about, I remember at a parent teacher conference, uh, they told my mom, they said, he's, he's good in class, but he likes to stand off to himself. He said, other, when other people are doing uh, stuff uh, and getting in trouble and stuff, he's off by himself. He don't, he, he's not participating. And as an adult, I thought back to that parent teacher conference, and I said, yeah, I've always been one to not fall into the status quo, and now I understand that was something that God was putting into me so that I would not, so that, because he was taking me in a different direction. But people have to make up their mind for themselves and with God. Not just because other people are doing something. Because if you, people are not careful, people are not careful, people are going to be standing in line buying sanitizer, and they're going to be like, well, to get sanitizer, you got to put this stamp on your hand first. Yeah. Put this stamp on your head. Okay. Bam. Got the mark. We got to insert this chip so you can have a lifetime supply of sanitizer. You gotta be careful. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, ma'am. What does um, kill by? Him? What was that? Crucify. Crucify? Yeah. Oh, it was a it was a oh. form of uh, death penalty punishment. Uh, back that's how they that's how they that's how they that's how they punished them. So they killed him. That's what that meant. Crucified. You was gonna say something? Oh, I could. Uh... With, uh, okay, y'all, we are getting ready to go. Yeah. What well, uh, Minister Damien was saying in the scripture he brought, and Sunday after church, it came in my spirit to, to reach out to my sister and tell her, don't receive nothing if it's not faith. You know what I'm saying? And uh, If it's not faith? If it's not faith. Okay. If it's not encouraging. Got gotcha. you. If it's negative, that I don't need to hear that. Okay, yeah. And the scripture that came to me was, the scripture in whatever the scripture where Jesus put everybody out but brought the parents Peter, mm -hmm. James, and John. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Faith entered the room. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know what, I needed to hear that. I wrestled with it because I'm like, man, my sister don't want to hear from me. Mm -hmm. You know, but I was obedient. And yesterday, she called me, talking about amputating my, my nephew's toes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's listen, <laughs> that's extreme. Mm -hmm. Go get 10 different opinions, mm -hmm. you know? And she was like, the word you told me and somebody else told me, 
She was like, when they came in, because they came in talking amputation, he was like, what's that? Mm -hmm. You know, she was like, please excuse yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll talk about this outside the room. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just, man, don't receive nothing negative. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and I feel like in this situation, I know he gonna, because she said it's starting to turn around. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, the, whatever, the white blood cells and whatever, whatever, it's starting yeah. to, uh -huh. He ate. He like, well, I gotta be here. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? But I believe in faith. Yeah. He gonna walk. His yeah. feet gonna touch the ground and walk. Yeah. And yeah. you was in my spirit that everything you go through would be. And if it's negative, no, no, I wanna thank you. But okay, yeah. we gonna go to the next one. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Don't receive if it's not faith. Uh -huh. We trust in God. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And we serve yeah. God. Yes. That ain't nothing impossible for it. Mm -hmm. So what's impossible, what is impossible to man is possible with God. Yes, yes, yeah. come on now. You know what I'm saying? So, it was just, it's just you, you know what I'm saying, Zoe, you know what I'm saying, my nephew, it's just in faith. Because like you said earlier, you know what I'm saying, with Zoe, mm -hmm. I lose this fever off of her. I'm not buying, you know what I'm saying, like, that's what I'm saying, like, mm -hmm. it just sounds so foreign to me when I hear it. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I lose this off of her, even the... The asthma, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I loose and open her airways. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remove that constriction. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, because. Hey. Yeah. Because <laughs> hey. demons are, are, are there to vex and oppress. Mm -hmm. right. So if a demon is spirit-filled believers, the demon cannot possess inside, come from the inside anymore, and be on the inside. Um, but they can oppress people. They can hold you down. And so if there's a spirit of infirmity that's trying to oppress, trying to hold someone down, you say, loose them and let them go. Yeah. And be dismissed. Get, 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 leave. You, you don't want them sticking around. You want, you want them to loose that person and let them go. Spirits of uh, addiction, bondage, loose them and let them go. Um, and, and, and that's, yeah. so that's, that's how, that's. That's my take on it. Um, a, a, a time, 10 for your time. We're going to have to make sure, can we please address that yeah. next time that we uh, come back? I want to make sure we address that because that's, that's, I want, I got something to say about that. And I also have something else that's, that we've heard, and we've been saying years ago, and this will be very interesting. Um, and it's regarding, ooh, should I say it? No. Instead, we're going to want to eat again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Okay. Why would you even bring it up? No, you don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, give me the mic. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring it up next time. Please. Oh. It's, 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 I'm going to tell you, it's, we're going to get deep. It's good. Yes. It's good. It's yes. good. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. You got so, man, like, uh, huh? next time on Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> It so we right when they about to get into it. So we we didn't bring it up, but as I close, I want to say something about these doctors' reports. You do have to hear God and and get God get God voice on that. I was just reading something. I don't even know this lady. It came across something on the internet, and she put up this thing. Maybe y'all saw it because it's viral. It had like seven thousand shares last time I saw it. That she had, she's had, she has breast cancer, mm -hmm. and now it has metastasized to her liver where she had stage four breast cancer and they found two tumors and she started the, stat the status with bad news, good news. And bad news was she was telling about the doctor's report and now it has spread to her liver. She said, so the liver is secondary, the, ca the cancer is, the, the breast cancer is primary, the, uh, the liver is secondary and they've given her 11% chance to live. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is still experimental stuff out there they can do but the doctors are saying it's not looking good. This lady looks like you wouldn't even know that if you, if you, if you, when you see her, you wouldn't know that any of that's going on. She's a motivational speaker. She said, the good news is I don't have time to die, y'all. That's what she said. She said, I ain't got time to die. She said, I'm going to cut my hair because cancer going to try to pull it out anyway. And she says, I'm getting ready to fight this. And I, I, I'm, um, she says, I'm, um, I'm, it's a term she used, it was a hashtag, but she says, I am fighting this in faith. Amen. Fighting this in faith. And that's what we have to do. If you get any kind of report, you continue to fight it in faith. Yeah. And even as I was saying a couple weeks ago, even if, Lord, I remain faithful even unto death. Because how I many you know that when you 
Transition. If you transition in God, as I said this before, you still in God when you transition. You still in God. And, and then you heal, you heal. You you are healed. And then the other thing I was thinking of going back to your nephew and B, remember they said, Well, who sinned? The father or the mother? And, and Jesus says, Neither. But this is so the glory of God. This was this is this is so that God's glory can be revealed. So sometimes it's God, God is working in that situation, and, and, and He sometimes God revealed this to me, right? Sometimes He wants you to get be be in the midst of several doctors because He need their faith to increase. So He needs you to sometimes He will maybe prolong the situation, and it may look worse because these doctors did not have faith. They didn't believe in miracles. They did not believe, but God just wanted to touch their heart. He bring your very situation into their office, and then He says, "Now, now that they got, now that I got the attention with this matter." I'm getting ready to heal your loved one. I'm getting ready to heal you. You're going to go back before them with a report. And then and they're going to be confounded. And, and their situation is going to cause them, your situation is going to cause them to want to serve me, to want to know more. How in the world, when our reports, when all of my medical records, when all of my studies, when everything that I know says that there's no cure, there's no way out of this, that they turned this, that this situation turned around. Who you say did it? And you say, I, I told you it was going to happen. I did, prayer did it. I told you I didn't want any medicine. I just wanted to pray. Yes. And then they was healed. And now this doctor won't know, well, what is this prayer? What is this thing? Tell me more about this prayer. Tell me more about this God that you serve. Yes. And you got, now you didn't lay the doctor to the Lord because of your, they started off from an ailment. It was an assignment. But look, at, look what God did. What was meant, what you thought was evil, God turned it around for good. So we got to just keep the faith. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just pray, Lord, we thank you for everyone that's here tonight. Lord, I pray, I pray, Lord, for your anointing, oh God, to be upon us, to continue to be upon us, Lord, in every aspect of our life, every situation, oh God. Lord, we just Thank you just for who you are and what you're doing, oh God. Everyone that's under the sound of my voice, oh God, from the youngest to the oldest, oh God. You see and you know all of our situations. And so, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you continue to cover us, continue to be with us, oh God. From the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, Lord, we pray. We decree that healing is our portion. Deliverance is our portion. Increase is our portion, oh God. Everything that you have for us, Lord, as we get closer to you, Lord, we, we ask you to open up the floodgates. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for safe travels as we leave here to get to our destinations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. If you had an offering, Lord, put on your heart to give, you can just drop it in the basket. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Please tell someone about the Lord and